Good morning, everybody. I'm Karen Conover from DNVGL, and I'm one of the C3E ambassadors. And I am here to kick off our first award presentation. I'm very excited to do that. Uh, the first category today that we will be presenting an award in is the international category, and I'm really pleased to give that to Radhika Tucker. Radhika is based in Nairobi, and she's currently the Director of Corporate Affairs for Green Light Planet, a company that designs and distributes high-quality, affordable solar home energy solutions for under-electrified consumers in 40 countries under the consumer brand Sun King. Greenlight Planet has helped more than 45 million people who previously depended on kerosene, diesel generators, and dispo disposable battery lighting as their primary source of light. So think about that again, 45 million people. Radhika joined Greenlight Planet's Mumbai office in 2009 to expand the company's presence to African and other Asian markets before moving to Kenya in 2012 to launch its flagship office in Africa. She oversaw global business development for almost a decade before she moved into her current role. And today, she oversees external industry relations and policy relations, and she focuses on strengthening the company's internal culture, policy, and governance. Uh, Greenlight continues to grow at a dynamic pace around the world. Before Joining Greenlight, she built a career in business development and uh, consulting in the healthcare sector in the US. She also served as an AmeriCorps volunteer, uh, focusing on public education reform in New York City, and she holds a BA in international relations in, from Tufts University. Radhika is the first female elected to the board of directors of the Global Off-Grid Energy Industry Association. She was elected in 2016, and today she's serving as the president of the board. I want to tell you a little bit about what her nominator said in her nomination form. Uh, she described her as an amazing leader, a boss, a coach, and a mentor, and she pulled out specifically three leadership qualities that were important to her and thought really made a difference and had her stand out. First, she's inclusive getting to know all employees and making all team members feel like an equal part of the solution. Second, she brings out the best in everyone, finding people's unique talents and helping employees achieve their goals. And third, she works fearlessly and inspires others to do the same, always willing to try new things and not being scared of making mistakes along the way. Her nominator said, I can't wait to see what she does next. And I think that I can speak on behalf of all of us in the room and say, we can't wait to see what she does next too. So please join me in congratulating Radhika. Thank you, Karen. I'm honored to be here today. This is inspiring. Um, I have to admit, and this is kind of ironic now, when I was nominated for this award, I felt like a bit of an imposter. <laughs> um, and that's really because I didn't study anything related to clean energy. I'm not an engineer, and I, didn't, I don't design our products. I kind of fell into clean energy. A little over 10 years ago, I was curious about the growing social venture space of companies using innovative technology to solve for the kinds of complex social changes that had traditionally been addressed by international aid organizations. At the time, the founders of Greenlight Planet were a few months into launching their off-grid solar lighting business and wanted someone with professional sales experience to help them figure out how to develop a channel sales network in India. And I thought, sure, I can translate my years of selling consulting engagements and launching business intelligence platforms to sell small $20 solar lanterns. How hard could that be? <laughs> um, I was genuinely excited about the potential impact that we could have by replacing kerosene lamps with solar-powered alternatives, but admittedly, in the first few months, I wondered if I could ever become excited about selling um, the kind of gadget that you might find on the store of a sporting goods uh, uh, of a sporting goods store. Um, but then I made my first visit to an off-grid village in India, and um, there I met a family that proudly pointed to a large, dark area of ash on their walls. It was residue from their hurricane kerosene lamps. They had removed the ash from the ceilings and the other walls in the home, but they left this one spot 
as a reminder of the polluting, noxious fumes from kerosene lamps that they would no longer have to breathe, thanks to their Sun King solar lamps. And that's when it changed. Um, I stopped seeing our products as cutting edge technology or gadgets, and I understood them for the transformative power they have on the way more than a billion people continue to live today. Women and children disproportionately suffer from indoor air pollution and from field-based lighting. And they spend more of their time indoors. Women also are more likely to become victims of sexual violence when commuting in the dark, for example, just to use the outhouse. And it's estimated that the health impact from this kind of continued exposure to the fumes of kerosene lamps is equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. That last statistic hit me really hard one morning, one early January morning, when I received an email from one of our distributors in Namibia. The email contained a picture of a woman holding a newborn baby with a Sun King lamp right next to her. And the short message in the email said, this was the first baby in that village to be born by the light of a solar lamp instead of a kerosene lamp in the delivery room. And I immediately had this image of a baby coming into this world out of her mother's womb and inhaling her first breath through a cigarette. <laughs> And that with our solar lamps and solar home systems, this would no longer be the case. That babies can enter the world and just take a clean, fresh breath of air. In areas that lack, sorry, that, that visual is really strong today. It still gives me chills down my spine. Um, because it so powerfully captures the drastic difference in the trajectory of opportunity afforded to someone born in an area without access to reliable energy and the profound imbalance and equality that's established for the first day of one's life. In areas that lack access to the grid, productive and income generating hours are dictated by sunrise and sunset. Children that may have the will and the smarts to educate themselves and advance in socioeconomic strata are forced to squint by kerosene light when they study, conscious of the burden each additional hour of light has on their family's finances. These stories and these visuals um, empower me. Uh, it, this is what have kept me going, and it's how I ended up on this path of clean energy. Working on distribution, energy access, regulatory policy, and advocacy for a dynamic and extremely fast-growing industry for a little bit more than a decade now. Understanding the profound human impact are cutting-edge gadgets. <laughs> um, in, also inspire the more than 1,200 men and women across 10 countries in Africa and Asia that make up Greenlight Planet today. It's what has driven us to bring our solar-powered energy systems to nearly 12 million homes around the world, changing the trajectory for more than 55 million individuals, a lot has changed in a few months, um, that, that were left off the electric grid. We have also played a significant role in shaping our still nascent and fast-growing industry, which has collectively enabled a quarter billion people to access clean, high-quality solar-powered energy in the last 10 years and offset more than 60 million metric tons of carbon emissions. As one of very few women that has been around for the entirety of our industry's existence, I'm grateful to C3E for this work, for recognizing those of us that are often the only woman on a panel, at the table, in a room, um, so often overlooked or assumed to be far less capable, knowledgeable, and powerful than we are, until we create or are given the space to share our voice. It's important as women that we remain intentional about amplifying each other's voices so that a future generation of women can enter the workforce without experiencing this feeling of being overlooked, not seen, not heard, and just inherently and implicitly belong. I'll close with a few thank yous. I'm grateful to Jody Wu for nominating me, um, to Nish and Patrick, the humble co-founder leaders of Greenlight Planet, my parents for raising us to understand the power of entrepreneurship, my husband for supporting me, <laughs> um, the first five green lighters that, uh, that bought into my vision uh, for what we could do on the continent, I'm sorry, I get emotional, um, and the whole family of green lights, um, the 1,255 green lighters, 3,500 Sun King sales agents, and uh, more than 300 distributors that share our passion. Thank you. <laughs>